Today you're going to learn how you can use Word Builder and connect it with Sibelius. Hi, I'm Ewan and welcome to Ewan Smith Music. It's a full on tutorial today, but I hope you enjoy it. We're going to go deep dive into how you can link your Word Builder in East West Sound Libraries and connect that to Sibelius and also include another example of how you can connect other sounds in there as well. Let's go. Okay, so to create a fresh composition in Sibelius, first of all, we scroll down to the new score as the software opens and we click on choral and song. We see that we've got choir SATB. So we want to click on that and for this example, demonstration I'm just going to put in a couple of things I'm not going to change too much I'm just going to put in a very very quick title that then creates an SATB soprano alto tenor bass score and then we are ready to go next what we need to be able to do is we need to be able to go up to the play pull down menu at the top of the screen here and next we want to click on setup so using this tiny little icon here we click that and then we open setup now here is the general MIDI sound uh, set that's been used and is active and is available on all of these but what we need to be able to do is we want to be able to create a new sound set so that we can tell Sibelius which one we're going to be using we're going to be using the play plugin to be able to access the east west sounds so we're going to click on new and we're going to call this ewsc just for ease okay next what we need to be able to do is we need to deactivate the general midi because we don't want it to be able to access that we want it to be able to access the play plugin for each of the different tracks so because there's satb soprano alto tenor bass we need four instances of play so you click activate for each instance and it will load here so we've got one instance and then we just repeat that four times to have play one two three and four you'll see on the right hand side it has a sound set which we don't want we want this to say none and the reason being is because we're going to be creating our own sound set shortly so we make sure that we cycle through through all of these and make sure that those are set to none and then as you can see at the top here it says EWSC with a little asterisk next to it we need to save because we don't want that to go back to default to the general MIDI sound set so we need to be able to do that next to be able to make that manual sound set we click on to the right of active devices we click on manual sound sets and you can see that we've got play here now underneath the device we've got the four play devices that we have already put into the active devices and then we want to be able to show that device and then you'll see that when we click show that brings up the play plugin now of course we need to be able to tell Sibelius what sounds we want to use so in the play plugin we click on browser we scroll down to symphonic choirs in my case it's symphonic choirs platinum we click on multis because that is the only patch that will work with the word builder and because we've got four different patches we got four different voices i'm going to select the sopranos first of all you've got different options down here you've got dynamic modulation hard modulation and you've got other options as well again just for the purposes of this example i'm just going to use the dynamic modulation and therefore we'll have the most breadth in terms of dynamic modulation range and such like once that's loaded you select the next instance same again click show you're then going to click on alto this time and then you are going to select dynamic modulation and you're going to click add and it adds that in these load and you then repeat this step for both the tenor which will be play three and also the bass which will be play four once those four steps are done, the next step is to be able to tell Sibelius that these are going to be manual sound sets. And the way you do that is you make sure that those different devices are told which sound set, sound IDs we're going to be using. So in order to do that, you need to be able to select use manual sound set. This box here allows us to use these extra options here. For play example one, we're going to be using voice, female, soprano and normal. Once you've done that, it's super important to click apply because that will then apply the sound ID. You repeat this process for number two. You're going to go here, voice, female, alto this time, normal, click apply, play three. You're going to make sure, use manual sound set, make sure you go to voice. This time we're going to male and we're going to tenor, we're going to normal, click apply. And then lastly, play four and then we use manual sound set click on the sound ID, voice, male, down to bass, normal, click apply. You'll see that when I click apply, that sound ID appears up here in the top right. Make sure you save your manual sound set and of course you can then close. When you can cycle through each of these, play one, play two, play three, play four, that then shows you all the different options. Those sound IDs are now associated with those four different voices. If you want to make sure that your Sibelius software outputs the correct 
output for the audio because sometimes when you come to enter notes they are, there is no sound or you've selected the wrong output. Just make sure your interface up here is selected Focusrite Thunderbolt. In my case it could be sound output, could be headphones, or it could be a different interface for you. Make sure you've done that and then you can close and it'll ask you if you want to save any changes. In case you haven't pressed save already, click yes, no problem at all. We can close that down. Next step is to open the mixer in Sibelius. Now if you don't see these options I'm going to talk to you about, this button here that looks like a bar graph, if you select that it will show you the different uh, views for the mixer and you can then extend or limit these as much as you wish. So what we want to do is we want to have got three different sections for each of these tracks. Each of those tracks one belongs to soprano or S, alto, A, T, tenor or B, bass. So what you want to first want to do is you want to select this second one here and you want to tell track one that it is play, it's, it's soprano, play two, it's for the altos, play three for the tenor and play four for the bass. Next you want to tell each of these tracks what those sound IDs are. For number one it's soprano, for number two it's alto, number three tenor and number four is bass and you'll see that it selects channel one for each of those that's absolutely fine you can just leave that as is next we need to be able to do a couple of things we can put some notes in first of all let's just play those so you've got four notes here and you can hear the voice are singing hallelujah. So what you want to be able to do if you want to change those, this is where the magic comes in. So what you do is you click on mixer again and then in mixer there is a little cog and the cog is available for each of the four tracks. If you click on the first cog it opens up an instance of play and then from here this is where you can edit your word builder sound. So from here you've already got sopranos and dynamic modulation. You click on the menu at the top that says player and then in into Word Builder and it will load up Word Builder and you can see Hallelujah is there. But say you wanted to use a different phrase, you can of course type that in English, phonetics or the Votox which is the computer language for converting into the phrase you want or in this demonstration I'm just going to use some English phrases. Okay, we're going to try and find one that has four different words in it. The time has come. Now in order for this to be something that the choir sings throughout, we have to change each of those words for all of the different different tracks. So what we're going to do is we're going to have this first one here, we're going to then close that down. It's also worth mentioning that in order to preserve these word builder words it won't save it when you save your Sibelius file. So it is worth actually considering at the top here there are two options. There is something called Open FXP and Save FXP. So when you click on that at the top of the play window, this only appears when you are using play inside of Sibelius. If you click save, it will ask you to save your VST data so that when you close your score, you can then load up this data and it will preserve all of your text from Word Builder so that you don't have to keep re-inputting it all the time. And this is going to be handy, especially when you're dealing with phrases that are much, much longer or dealing with far, far more more lyrics in your choral works. Once you've saved it, it will allow you to close down the window, so it's a bit of a fail safe. If you don't save it, the window will not be able to be closed down. Let's do the same then for the auto. We're going to select the cog, word builder, phrases, English phrases, time has come. Again, same idea. Once that's done, you'll then be able to play back and you'll be able to hear the time has come. So that's my little example of there. Now obviously in Sibelius you can add in lyrics as well. You can do that by clicking Command L on a Mac, very similar to that on a PC. The instructions on the screen now. And you can just type in the time has come. And then obviously then it will space that out for you. You can do the same on all of these. It's worth noting that these lyrics will not change what's written in the word builder. That's very much separate from what you write in Sibelius. So it's not yet the case where lyrics that you type into Sibelius are dynamically changed in the word builder. So the lyric feature is very much just a text based feature in Sibelius that you're using. There's a couple of extra tricks which I will talk to you about as well. If you wanted to put in some phrasing, what you would do is just you would quite simply just put in a nice long slur like this and it will then smooth out the sound. You can also repeat that if you wanted to for example have some staccato sounds, staccato for all of these parts, clicking the staccato over on the right will also help. 
Now, I showed you in a previous tutorial on my channel, you can tweak those words. So if you thought that the time has come, didn't quite sound realistic, you could go back over to Word Builder, clicking on the track that you wanted, and you could then edit and shape these sounds as well. So that's a quick bit about articulations. Now, you will notice with Word Builder that sometimes it doesn't refresh the words go back, go back to the beginning. For example, if I was to click here and play from here, that it doesn't play the right words. So what you have to do is you have to tell Sibelius to basically reset the phrase. And you do that with a very nice little command, a MIDI control message. And the way you would do that is you would just put in text. So in this case, I'm just going to put in technique text by just clicking command and T on a Mac, very similar on a PC. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to put in tilde control message 20 comma and then the velocity 127 click off that it disappears so it's invisible you have to make sure that this is on all of the different bars again this will not show on your score but again it's really useful and you'll notice that when we play back to the beginning To go into more detail, I have included a list of control messages that you can include in Sibelius based from their reference. And that's quite handy for you to when you're using more complicated phrasing and things like that. If you just wanted to have SATB, that's also fine, but you can also include other instruments as well. The process for that would be absolutely simple. So say you wanted to include some Eric Whitaker choir patch, you would activate that over on your active devices. You then have to create a manual sound set for that as well. Eric Whitaker choir, you would then show the Eric Whitaker choir, it would then load that plugin and you can, as before, select which sound you wanted. So if you wanted something a bit more general so that you wanted some nice legato patches, you could quite happily do that and then load that in. You are loading patches that will obviously take up more memory, more RAM, and that's just something to bear in mind. But once that's loaded, you can close that down. We don't want to use general MIDI as the sound set for this one. Like before, we select none, and then we go in here, and we're going to use a manual sound set. We're going to go into sound ID, go into go to voice, female, sopranos, so this time ensemble, normal, and then we're going to apply. Okay, and then we're going to save, because this adds in those active devices into the East West SC so this is quite bespoke and then what you would then do is you would then go and add your instrument in go to home and then you would add or remove and this time I'm going to add in some voices so I'm going to add in some singers expand that and we're going to go into soprano and then we're going to add that to the score next of course you have to tell the mixer that you're using the soprano so we're using the Eric Quitico choir and that we're using the female soprano ensemble then we can select the cog I'm just going to stick on the legato R. You can change these using MIDI control messages, again, hidden on the score. Close that down. And then we're going to put in the notation over the top here. Okay, so how did you get on? Let me know in the comments below how you got on. If you had any tricks or you want to share with everyone else, do drop those below as well. And of course, I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters, without whom I wouldn't be able to make these videos. And also for you, the audience, who always help me out by asking questions and, of course, continue to like my videos, subscribe to the channel, and also share these videos as well. There's a lot more planned in the future, so please do make sure that you tap that thumb and also hit subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. And I will see you next week for another one. Take care.